Honey, you know they say his great-grandmama was black. Maybe that's why he did so much to help the plight of the black people. But why are there a lot of presidents that help the black people that always end up in scandals? It's just a scandalous thing, child. Now y'all know this disclaimer like the back of y'all hand. The whole video is hearsay, rumor, and gossip that I find on TV, online, magazine, books, and I ball it all up and I tell you guys a story. It's all for entertainment purposes only. Now let's get to it. Which Warren G do y'all think was the most gangster, most scandalous, most hood out of all of them? It sure enough wasn't this one. This Warren G in the top 10 of the most scandalous people I've ever done. Let's get to it. All I'm going to say about his background is that he was born on November the 2nd, 1865 in Blooming Grove, Ohio. I'll also let you know that he was our 29th president. But from here on out, nothing but scandals. Or as we like to say, the scandal child. The scandal. Now, the very first scandal talks about the suspicious wealth that he and his friends acquired, as well as the sketchy debts that many people traced back to his administration. Speaking of his administration, Warren Harding filled his cabinet with homeboys that he liked to refer to as the Ohio Gang. Well, allegedly, as soon as these men got in cabinet positions, it was Scam City. Baby, I'm talking about they were selling pardons for people who committed heinous crimes to get out of jail. They were getting kickback from countries contractors who were building the veteran hospitals, even selling surplus medical supplies just to get the money from that. Writing folks names down, talking about you need federal or state money for this person to get a wheelchair, and then when they investigate, this person is up running track. There's much more than that. Allegedly, Charles Forbes, who was Warren Harding's best friend and the head of the Veterans Bureau, got sloppy. And the Senate did an investigation and he got caught. So you know what that mean, right? Warren got caught as well. Absolutely not. The folks say that Warren G. Harding turned on Charles Forbes so fast, even called Charles Forbes to his office in front of the senators and picked Charles Forbes up by his throat and told him something to the effect of, boy, who you think you are stealing from the U.S. of A. And all of that was for show because allegedly, immediately after that incident, he and Charles Forbes were cooking up an idea for Charles Forbes to leave out of the country. Again, a senator caught a whiff of it and was like, uh, I know you lying. No, he needs to be punished. And Warren did what they asked, but he made sure that his friend only served 20 months in prison. That's less time than some of these people out here been getting for stealing that PPP loan. Now we finna get deeper because see, Charles Forbes got off easy. Another cabinet member involved with the scheme, Charles F. Kramer, he took himself off the planet a week before he was to stand in front of the Senate. And as you will see, many more people took themselves off the planet after having dealings with Warren G. Harding. Two of them happened during the Teapot Dome scandal. And this is when his administration was caught red-handed, giving his wealthy friends drilling rights to the Federal Reserve's high-grade petroleum and oil fields. Can you freaking even imagine? These are oil fields set aside for our nation's reserve. We need that oil, our oil, in case everything goes haywire and other nations turn against us. And this man's office is just letting his wealthy friends and his cronies just drill into the nation's oil, the nation's gas and stuff. It was pure craziness. And when the public found out, it was a much bigger scandal than the one I just told you about. And so, you know, somebody had to go down. They needed to shut mouth. And so what do you know, while it's still being investigated and questions are still being asked and answered, the sons of the two oil barons that were actually doing the drilling, so the friends that were getting the oil, their sons meet up at a home together and just end up dead. Allegedly, one of the sons just came over to the other person's son's house out of the blue, pulled out a gun and shot that person and then shot himself. Yes, there were a lot of rumors on the streets between people in the know that those two boys were done away with to make sure that their fathers shut their mouth. And guess what they fathers did? Shut their mouths. Don't tell me Warren G. Harding wasn't a G, even though history says he don't got nothing to do with it though. Now that's the business end of scandals. What about the love scandal? He got Bill beat. He got JF beat. He got t Rump beat. And I gotta get creative with my words, y'all. They locking down on me. But anyways, ain't none of them guys got nothing on Warren G. Hardy. This man cheated on his wife with no mercy. I don't care how much she cried and begged. This lady was embarrassed every single day. In fact, 
His secret service used to complain to people how they felt they were being used as pimps to procure his women. Not only that, he made them stand in the hallway as lookouts for his wife while he was in his office making all kind of cats meow. You see, Warren G. Harding allegedly didn't even usually know the names of the women that he was messing around with. However, there were a few who stood out, like Grace Cross. But listen to this rumor with your ears turned on because after all the twists and turns, it ends in absolute devastation. Story says that Grace Cross was actually Warren G. Harding's aide while he was still a senator. But rumor has it, when Warren set his eyes on the presidency, he wanted to kind of shoo her away, get rid of her. And he thought he could take her to a hotel room and just kind of gently let her down and break it off with her. Baby Grace acted even crazier than I used to be back in the day. The folks say that Warren told Grace it was over. She started hollering, kicking at things, pulling at her hair. And Warren had never seen this behavior from her, so it kind of frightened him. So he hurried up and tried to turn around, you know, like, I'm sorry, I'm gone. Honey, that man got a knife to the back. Thank goodness the wound wasn't that deep. But even after this, Grace Cross remained a pain in his behind. She started writing letters to his office telling them, ask your senator about that birthmark on his back. Ask him who gave him that. And she would also write letters saying ask him about the birthmark on his back and tell him I will give him another one if he does not talk to me. And those frightened Warren G. Harding but he felt like if he could just ignore them they would go away. Then Grace Cross started writing letters that said tell your senator Warren G. Harding if he does not reach out to me does not contact me I will leak details of our affair to the press. I will leak details of our love letters to the press. And yes Warren G. Harding like a dummy had been writing love letters to his mistress when they were still good. Well, baby, you know what time it was. Time to bring in that gang he took to the White House with him, the Ohio gang. Rumor has it that one of his Ohio gang cronies, a man by the name of Jess Smith, to handle the problem. So Jess Smith did a private investigation on Grace Cross and found out that she had a best friend by the name of Bertha Martin. So he went to Bertha Martin as a stranger basically and started to sweet talk her up. And as the conversation got deeper and deeper, he started to ask her things about her friend Grace Cross. Once Jess Smith started asking questions pretty much related to Warren G. Harding, Bertha's antenna went up and she realized, oh crap, this is somebody that Warren has sent to try to find some dirty information on my friend. F you and goodbye. But baby, that F you and goodbye came a little bit too late. Jess Smith could tell by the conversation already that Bertha would definitely spill a lot more. And so he showed up at her job one day telling her that she could have a job as an editor of the Washington Post if she told him every single thing she knew about Grace Cross and if she could get her hands on the love letters that Warren G had written to Grace Cross. Bertha Martin turned on Grace Cross quicker than the three minutes y'all boyfriends last in the bedroom. Real fast. Gossip claims she called up Grace Cross and invited her to lunch and also told her, girl, bring those love letters you always talking about. I want to read them. And Grace Cross, trusting her best friend, did. So they're at lunch eating and talking and then Grace Cross gets the papers out to hand them to Bertha Martin. Baby, why come Bertha Martin snatched the papers out of Grace's hands, took off running out of the restaurant with that 1910 skirt and 1910 shoes on and continued to run full speed down the next two blocks until she ran into Jess Smith who was waiting for her on a corner. And that may have been funny, but what happened next was certainly not funny. Because Jess Smith was true to his word and he did give Bertha Martin the editor position at the Washington Post and this in infuriated Warren G. Hardy. What good was it going to do to shut Grace Cross up by getting the love letters away from her if Jess Smith was just going to hire her very best friend to be editor of the Washington Post? What if one day Bertha Martin got upset with Warren G. Harding or just one day had the inkling to tell everything? She was the editor of the newspaper. She could just type up the whole love story in there and still blast him. And so allegedly Warren G. Harding is just like, that's your plan? This was your plan? What were you thinking? This idea is like, Poof. and because the idea was like, Poof, the folks say that somebody else had to be like, Poof. and so child gossip claims that about a year and a half after this incident, Jess Smith was found bent over with his head in a trash can and a bullet to his head. And turns out the fears about Bertha Martin spilling tea were accurate.
because allegedly after Jess Smith passed away, Bertha Martin, who had never truly cared for Jess Smith anyway, started printing out all of these articles, basically accusing this man of being a homosexual. Not only was she outing him, but allegedly she was doing it in a disrespectful way. You know, just talking, just typing. And she thought she was good. You know, why not? Jess Smith is dead. Who gonna check me, boo? Gossip claims that Bertha was doing all of this spilling off at the mouth, not realizing that just because Jess Smith was passed away, that don't mean that other people, higher people, are not watching you. Watching you spill secrets on somebody. If you could spill it so freely on Jess Smith, Who's to say that you wouldn't spill it on any of them when they passed away? Baby, the folks say that two months after Jess Smith's death, Bertha Martin was also found leaned over and bent over with her head in an oven. And of course, this was just another person who took themselves off the planet. Never mind the fact that she had on a full length fur coat, she had on high heels, a string of pearls around her neck, even had on a full face of makeup. It looked like she had been getting ready to go out on a date. And whoever this mystery man date was, gossip claims that people believe that he possibly committed this murder. There was another person who was allegedly unalived on Warren's watch. You see, the rumors say that he had a habit of using his presidency to go bust up bootleggers and speakeasies and probably wasn't at no juke joints, but yeah, to go bust up illegal establishments uh, serving alcohol. Well, the folks say that he and his Ohio gang would take all of this illicit alcohol and have illicit night parties. The White House would turn into the trap house with all kind of rowdy music, had all kind of exotic dancers, rooms in the back to freely use in case somebody got lucky. And this rumor says that one of those dancers was giving a private table dance to Warren. Well, she ended up getting too drunk and missed a step and fell off of the table, but on the way down, she bust the back of her head. And just like that, she too had taken herself off the planet. And I haven't said it so far, but let me get it out now. What? Harry Fulton Phillips was another scandalous love story for President Harding. He had an affair with her for 15 years right behind her husband's back. The husband that was Warren's best friend. And I'm not talking about no best friend I just met you last year. Baby, no. The folks say this man was also from Ohio, was a childhood best friend to Warren Harding. Gossip claims the husband was hurt when he found out and that Warren G. Cole told him if he knew what was best for him, he would take this hush money and go on. So the husband took the hush money and went on. And the most scandalous, most talked about Warren G. Harding affair was with a woman named Anne, aka Nan Britton. Gossip claims that Warren met Anne when she was 15 years old and while he was still senator. Said he used to keep in touch with her under the premise of speaking wisdom to her. You know, I'm just writing you to tell you, make sure you make good grades. Make sure you listen to your parents. Be a good girl. Be a good girl. Well, I'm sure the parents didn't know that part of the good girl plan was their daughter messing around with you. And no, allegedly there was no underage stuff, but gossip claims as soon as Nan turned 20. Oh, Warren was right there, baby, with a present of girth. Let's just say that. A 51-year-old man's girth. 20 years old, 51. Warren was able to play this young lady like a fiddle. Oh, the first thing his love letters would say was that he was unhappily married. You know, I cannot wait to leave my wife for you. Wait for me, my darling. And Nan was soaking it up. She felt like he didn't really love or care for his wife, so she had no problem sneaking around with him right up under his wife's nose. And all this sneaking and geeking soon had your boy Warren sweating bullets because Nan ended up pregnant. Warren was absolutely terrified of the public finding out. Thank goodness he thought more of Nan than calling a disposal team and instead paid for her a brand new house in New Jersey where she moved and had her baby. The baby's name was Elizabeth and as soon as I saw Elizabeth, Baby, I turned into a guest on Maury. Uh-uh, cause no, Warren, that is your baby. What about the eye? Maury, Maury, look at the baby mouth, Maury. Now look at Warren's mouth. That is his baby. Child, that little girl look just like Warren G. Harding. And although Warren never denied the baby, he also never really did claim the baby. Matter of fact, I don't think he ever even met Elizabeth. But he did send child support payments through his secret service to Nan. Now, most mothers wouldn't have no more parts of him, especially when you act like you can't even come see my child. But not Nan. She was young and she was in too deep. Warren could call her up at the drop of a dime, tell her to send her baby away because he wanted to see her. And that's what Nan would do, even lowering herself to make trips to the
house just for a five minute quickie quick in the White House broom closet. And Warren used Nan, and she allowed herself to be used for just about four years. All the way until Florence Harding had enough. And Florence hasn't been mentioned anywhere in this story, but she is Warren's wife. And baby, when she got tired, she got tired. Rumor has it she has stomached his affair, stomached the sneaky little giggles from the Secret Service, even stomached the arrows and the frowned up looks she would get from the younger women who sometimes worked as little aides and things alongside her husband. But according to rumor, something happened where Florence could stomach no more. Now some stories say it was the fact that she found out that he had a three-year-old child and other stories say it was something else. But if we go with the story that says she found out about Elizabeth, Nan's child, then I am absolutely sure this did light some kind of fire in Florence because she and Warren together didn't even have any children. All I know is that gossip claims that in the month of July 1923, Warren G. Harding started having stomach problems out of nowhere. And these stomach problems would sometimes be so acute or so uh, severe that sometimes he couldn't move and then other times it would just like disappear or just be very mild. And this was off and on, off and on throughout the whole month of July. Well, at the very end of July, it seemed like Warren was completely healed. But then on August the 1st, his stomach issues came back and wasn't taking no prisoners, honey. It was hurting extra bad. And so now the doctor stepped in and not only did they care for Warren they actually ran tests and found out that he also was suffering from pneumonia so that's on August the 1st on August the 2nd Warren had been given his pneumonia medicine multiple times and so he was feeling better whereas before he could only lay down with his stomach pain and his pneumonia and could barely breathe now he was sitting up in bed talking walking around the room and it was while he was talking and laughing with one of his aides that his wife Florence showed up to the room well Florence Florence walks in all polite and she tells the aide that they can leave the room, that she wants to read to her husband, and that she will give him his medicine. Cha! Don't you know that five minutes later, Warren Gangs Delicious Harding was dead? Baby, the folks say that Florence got all the got back she needed in one dose. Listen, I'm not saying that the woman did it, but the rumors are out here and people certainly did believe at that time and some people still now that Florence Harding poisoned Warren G. Hardy. Matter of fact, soon after his death, there was a book released by the author Gaston B. Mean. And per him, he said that Florence told him that she had poisoned her husband. Allegedly, she was sick of his wicked ways and she wanted him to suffer. In fact, per Gaston, Florence told him that after she did poison her husband, Warren sat up and kind of looked at her, dead in her eyes, and she kind of just nodded like, mm-hmm. Yep, I did it. And he realized and he laid back and he died. So I guess the real gangster of this story turns out to be Florence Harding. I told y'all some of these old Hollywood hit pieces be more scandalous than the old Hollywood scandal. Some of these normal famous folk be doing the most. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. If you are new here, go ahead and click subscribe. And for all of you new subscribers, welcome to the channel. I hope I do not blow your hair back too much, but if I do, just get a wig and cover up the pieces that's gone. Welcome to Ashley Says So. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.